You ever watch a maestro do what they do and be so taken aback by how easy they make doing what they do look? If you're a sports lover, there's a high probability you've watched in awe as Cristiano Ronaldo slots a free kick in the top right corner or Roger Federer hits an inch-perfect backhand slice or LeBron James swoosh a three-pointer from the other side of the court. What makes sports icons so remarkable is how they resemble you and me. And how this gives us the unfounded belief that if we picked up a ball, we could be able to do at least half of what these greats do. The reality is often very far from our expectations because there's an incredible amount of work involved in being exceptionally great at any endeavor. This is a universal truth that is quite often overlooked when it comes to digital businesses or trying to make money online. The exponential wave of new developments has brought with it an unprecedented amount of new opportunities. This has given rise to wealthy individuals and a whole slew of gullible and delusional chances. People who think they can get a slice of the pie through a few mouse clicks without investing time, cultivating proper experience and building real tangible enterprises centered around value. Every single day, I get about three inboxes from Bitcoin, binary, and Forex traders selling prospects of making money online. These fly-by-night tricksters generally have a rudimentary understanding of financial markets and even less knowledge of the technologies that facilitate the trading of financial instruments. Let me make something explicitly clear. Anyone who promises you risk-free guaranteed returns that are normally high is a scammer. They're a scammer looking to coin off your desperation and lack of basic commercial acumen. Anyone who tells you building an internet business and making millions from the comfort of your home is easy and anyone can learn to do it in a few days is a bullshit clickbait artist who in all likelihood initially fell victim to the very con artistry they're trying to peddle to you. A lack of clear perspective around the sheer amount of work it takes is what's got a lot of people trying things with minimal effort and giving up after seeing zero results in a few days. Like building any type of business, an online presence you can monetize takes a lot of time, a lot of work and a lot of learning. Towards the end of 2018, I launched an online platform to help people connect with businesses in the township. The process to build a platform was very rushed, which means the design aesthetic and user interface was quite shoddy to say the least. I had very little understanding of how social networks operated, never mind how to build an online social network and make it commercially viable. I was just excited by the prospects of starting a business in the hip and happening digital space. I thought I could watch one or two YouTube video tutorials and have a profitable business in a few weeks. I paid a hefty school fees and time and money that could have easily been avoided if I had just taken the time to do the research and ideate to craft a more effective approach to a tested opportunity I'd identified. If you're a go-getting, energized entrepreneur with a strong bias for action like I have, then if we're being honest, the idea of spending a couple of weeks doing nothing but researching and refining an idea is quite boring more than boring for a lot of people who believe execution is everything and ideas are a dime a dozen, research for an aspiring entrepreneur can seem counterintuitive and feel like a waste of time. The challenge here is people often get excited by the prospects of having a business more than the actual business idea itself. Don't get into a relationship because you're tired of being single. Get into a relationship because you really like the other person and want to build something romantic together. That means taking the time to get to know the person with all their flaws and making a commitment to put up with the seemingly tedious part about dating so you can enjoy the ultimate benefits, you know, of being together. Okay, relax. This is not a column of matters for the heart, but this is an important comparison because it has so many parallels to entrepreneurship particularly in the pursuit of digital or internet businesses. Research is an important part of ideation, where you sharpen your ax before taking a swing at trees with blunt instruments and getting despondent when the tree shows no sign of falling after a few attempts. 
Even the sporting maestros spend a considerable amount of time watching tapes of competitors and analyzing plays and moves they can improve on or weaknesses in other teams they can exploit. The more you know, the better equipped you'll be at navigating more efficiently and making decisions that yield the highest return. Building a commercial model you can scale into a sustainable business is a process of iteration. This requires two things. One, a teachable attitude. And two, patience. The idea here is that you are always testing and tinkering to get a mix that works for you. There are thousands of digital tools available and hundreds more being developed each and every day. And trying to find the perfect solution that hasn't been thought of to solve a huge problem that from the get-go is impossible. Whatever idea you develop, you need to have the humility to accept that something like it probably already exists. You also have to accept that there's a high likelihood that your initial product offering sucks. This will allow you to give yourself ample amounts of space to grow. Research is important. It's important because it helps you identify avenues you can take to improve your offering and testing draws you closer to your market by showing you which improvements resonate best with the people you seek to serve. One of the videos I created in my early days of creating digital content is a video about a decision I took to quit my job as a banker in pursuit to make entrepreneurship my full-time life's work. Learning from how well this video performed relative to the other videos on my platforms tells me two things. One, people are drawn to personal storytelling, which means rather than providing my audience with what I feel are useful facts, if I want more engagement with the content I create, I will have better results if I share how I personally apply the entrepreneurship development tools I seek to teach about. The second thing I discovered from analytics of this video is how documenting one's entrepreneurship journey has the duality of being in itself highly engaging content, but also a useful barometer for any entrepreneur to check the progress they're making as they pivot from what's not working and think and iterate towards what's working. These days, tools to learn and develop new skills have become quite accessible. All you need is a computer and an internet connection, and within a few weeks, you could be creating your own WordPress website, YouTube channel, if you have a decent camera and editing software, or a podcast if you can get your hands on a mic and a sound recorder. If you are a creative like I am, you're constantly drawn to the new. Learning and accumulating new skills can be quite exciting, but if you're not careful, you can end up trying to do too many things because of all the new skills you're acquiring every day. This is exactly where I was several months back. Um, with Iposi, the business and brand I'm trying to build, I was training and facilitating while consulting with large corporate clients, simultaneously trying to build this platform for township businesses, do some videography and photography for my small business clients, and then trying to create fire content like this for esteemed audiences like yourself. Needless to say, it was a mess. And I realized that I'm doing more damage than good. I watched the video by Chris Du on the YouTube channel Future, a great channel that I highly recommend for entrepreneurs in the creative and digital space. It's just filled with amazing insights and incredible amounts of value. Shout out to Chris Du. In the video, a question comes up about specialists versus generalists, you know, whether to specialize or whether it's great to be a generalist. And Chris sums it up perfectly by saying, be a generalist on the inside, but be a specialist on the outside. In other words, focus externally on where you want the market to place your brand, while internally developing the skills across different disciplines. Building a loyal online following requires one to hone in on a specific area and start curating value around that area. So if the focus area of my business, you know, what provides consistent revenue, is in teaching insights, techniques, and providing entrepreneurs with tools to build digital and internet businesses, then what I communicate externally in terms of you know, content like this that I create 
needs to consistently reflect this. So to be efficient with my resources, therefore, requires that what I do internally integrates with what I communicate externally. So the e-commerce that I've built, for example, that sells apparel and accessories online, allows me to develop, test, and refine the insights and tools and techniques I use to train entrepreneurs who are also looking to create an online business or grow their digital presence. Nothing is more powerful than having personal testimonies you use as a framework to teach and share information. On the other hand, the media company helps us create content for our clients. This allows me to put together videos like this, which serve the dual purpose of marketing our content creation capabilities while sharing valuable insights online. This systems thinking keeps me and my team in check to ensure that whatever resources we use to build capabilities internally are in line with the integrated marketing communication we want to share externally. And this is what you need to think about when it comes to building your internet business, whether that's having an internet um, e-commerce platform like an online store, advertising through blogs, podcasts, and videos, or monetizing your following as an influencer. Be mindful of all the moving parts and how you need to work very, very hard to bring them all together in a way that makes business sense. You have to think of your internet business the way asset managers think about the investments. Put in the time to do the research, to understand how markets work and cultivate an investment strategy that makes business sense and that you believe in. Understand that chances of you being Warren Buffett are very slim, let alone becoming Warren Buffett in a few weeks. So don't listen to anyone who claims to be Warren Buffett or claims that you can be like him in a couple of clicks. In a growing share portfolio, you are initially going to make more wrong calls than right calls, but you get consistently better over time as you iterate approach and you start getting a clearer picture of what works and you start doing what works more consistently. Constantly communicate where you specialize externally and apply a systematic approach to ensure that every diverse thing you do internally integrates with what you're communicating to your audience, followers, and customers externally. Not easy, I know, but trust me, this is very, very effective, highly sustainable, loads of fun, and totally worth it. So I'll see you online. And if I will call online, if you're not online, Switch on.